What's up, Day Slayers? Patrick here. Um, so today I wanted to take a look back in history at a man named Conor McGregor. Um, he's been in the news a bit lately um, for not, some not so good things, punching old men, um, and just his, you know, his behavior since losing to Khabib. It's it hasn't made him look very good, and you know he he did bring a lot to our sport, and I thought it, it might be nice to think about and focus on um, some of the positive things he brought and one one of the positive things uh, that he really that really was under as underrated in his career was his grappling and his jujitsu um, so we're going to take a look at a few different things one is his x guard um, very impressive use of uh, leg entanglements for sweeps um, another is his uh, wrestling and takedown ability. Uh, it's something you'll, we're going to go over that he displayed well with Max Holloway. And third is his guillotine defense. Um, so if you get caught in a lot of guillotines, this will help you a lot. I learned a lot from this back five years ago, watching him against uh, Chad Mendez. And, uh, but we're also going to go over how he could improve that area of his game, which... Uh, was shown against Nate Diaz. So let's start off with uh, his first fight against Nate Diaz in the first round here. So here we go. I'm gonna, right here, we're taking a look. All right, right there, you just saw it. We're gonna go back a second. I'm gonna expand the screen a little bit. Hold on so we can, we can make this a little bit more theatrical. All right, so right here, you're gonna see him throw a kick, a low kick, and Nate Diaz is gonna catch it and take him down. Right here, Diaz dumps him down right there. Okay, so, so the first thing I wanna note is Connor's immediate reaction to the takedown, okay, is not to try to get back up, but instead it's to elevate Nate Diaz over his head using butterflies. Okay, so right here, as soon as Connor falls and he sees Nate uh, shadowing over him, he immediately finds inside foot position. That's his instinct. Okay, so he has two, his feet inside the perimeter of Nate's feet here. And he immediately catches butterflies and he's drawing his knees to his chest to encourage Nate Diaz to elevate over his head. Okay, and then once that happens, Connor immediately goes to ankle control. Super important. And you also notice he's starting to insert his X guard right here, pointing his toes. Really important detail there. Okay, and then he goes to you can't see it on the bat on the far side, but Connor goes for double ankle control. So now he has an X X sweep, kind of an X ankle pick sweep. Um, that's gonna happen right here. See, Nate Diaz cannot base on this foot. So he has control of the far, the uh, Nate's left leg with an overhook and Nate's right leg with an ankle pick right there. And then it's a very easy sweep. Right here, Connor can just stand up pretty much. Taking some punches, but he's ready to get up and get to top position. All right, so I thought that was just a very nice uh, awareness and openness to jiu-jitsu that a lot of MMA fighters just don't don't use. Most MMA fighters, the summation of their bottom game is just get up, um, just push the opponent away and get up. And you know, I just think there's a lot there's a lot of potential in MMA with X guard and Ashigarami, and uh, I'm always excited when I see you guys use it. Um, all right, now we're moving on to um, Conor McGregor's fight against Max Holloway back a long, long time ago. All right, let's just take a look. See here, as the video loads, you see Holloway land a nice high kick. Nice job. All right, so let's take a look at that takedown. Sort of a high crotch entry to a dump. Very nice. Okay, so there's two things I see here. Um, one, let's actually, let's also take a look at Max Holloway's nice 
head kick right there. Let's look at that again. You can see why McGregor wanted to take the fight to the ground here. Um, he also said his knee was a little bit injured, which made him want to wrestle more, which I don't know. I usually don't want to wrestle when my knees hurt, but. Okay, so right here. So McGregor initially enters in with his head on the outside and his right, his right arm hooking Max's legs. So that's like a high crotch entry here. Okay, so first thing I want to point out is McGregor's direction change. Very, very, uh, very, very impressive jujitsu uh, wrestling, I'd say. Uh, especially for some, I can sympathize. I'm not. I I didn't wrestle in college growing up, so like building instincts to change direction is not necessarily easy for us guys that start wrestling later. Okay, so McGregor initially penetrates forward and drives Max on his on his heels, um, which is you know, pretty intuitive thing to do. But now what he does next is he takes a, he starts to take a rotational back step with his left leg and basically put, do a 360, forcing Max Holloway to his back. Okay, so he, let's go back again to the rotation here. Okay, all of this, Max Holloway has his base on this leg. So if McGregor goes, goes to his left and rotates to his left. That's where Max Holloway has no base. And you can see the result. Other thing I want to point out is the high, is the top of lever principle, which McGregor uses really well. So we're back to the takedown here. You see where McGregor's right arm is going. It was initially, initially, look at McGregor's right arm. It's between uh, Holloway's legs primarily, okay? Now he's going to go from bottom of lever. The leg is the bottom of the lever. Okay. And he's going to reach up for the top of the lever. Now you see him going right around the Max's trap muscle right there. Okay. So along with the force, the kind of the engine, which is the rotational force of the legs doing a 360, McGregor used the bottom of the lever and the top of the lever up here to take Max down. Beautifully done. I use that a lot. Uh, in my stand-up, and it's just very efficient, uh, especially for those of us, like I said, who aren't necessarily, uh, don't necessarily have a wrestling background, and we can't just use raw horsepower all the time to take people down. Um, very good. Now, this next this next one I want to point out is my favorite. Uh, this is really where I learned my guillotine defense, and it, it really taught me the principle of uh, the importance of hip connection. Um, so we're just going to look right here at Chad Mendes beating up McGregor. I'll let you guys enjoy this once it loads. Oh dear. Nice. All right, we're going to watch that one more time. Hopefully it doesn't buffer. Very nice. And now he's ready to go punch him in the face and he's back in his domain. All right, so McGregor used jujitsu, knowledge of jujitsu there, to not to get off the ground. Yeah, he's very good at his awareness and anti jujitsu. So, uh, first thing I want to point out is just McGregor knew he needed to get up. So, just his strategy and savvy to bait. Uh, Mendez into grabbing his neck by opening his guard and taking his head off the mat, allowing Mendez to try to get a neck wrap. Um, that was that was a nice risk to take because he knew his his wrap to victory was on the feet. Okay, but next is what's really uh, I think the most important part is McGregor's awareness of what, of the prerequisites for um, for a guillotine to work. Okay, Chad Mendez, you're gonna see as he get slice he just opens the closed guard starts to wrap his neck what chad mendez needs to finish this guillotine here is obviously to get around mcgregor's neck but once he does he needs hip connection okay so mcgregor's priority as his neck is getting wrapped is to not let mendez connect his hips to mcgregor's hips 
So at first, McGregor uses butterflies, these butterflies to keep Mendez's hips away from his. Okay, what he's going to do next here is get up to his knees, where now Mendez is thinking things are going just how they should go. He's ready to drop down and hook his right leg over McGregor's uh, back. But you see some things that McGregor is doing with his left arm here. Okay, he's going to block hip connection right here once it plays. All right, that went a little bit fast. Okay, so right here, McGregor is ready to do a, a, uh, a gator roll to his left side, so to the neck wrap side. This is where it can get a little bit confusing. Uh, I kind of call it the exorcist escape because it looks like you're basically turning, turning your body and not your head. Um, but McGregor's gonna roll to his back which keeps Mendez's hips away from McGregor's. Okay, so we're right here. He rolls right there, okay? And he's able to get up to his feet. Right there, he rolls. Okay, so Mendez is trying to catch McGregor's hips by throwing this leg over, but McGregor's preemptive roll did not allow it. Um, now, I do want to point out an area where McGregor could have improved this. Uh, and because he didn't keep Mendez on, on his own back, and McGregor did end up on top. Um, it paid off here. It didn't matter. But you'll see in the next video with Nate Diaz when he lost, um, it would, there's one improvement he could have made here. And it is that right here, McGregor prioritized hooking, hooking Mendez's lat with his right arm to get up to his feet, rather than think, rather than thinking about pinning Mendez down, uh, Mendez's hips down. If you see right here, they both end up on their knees in the scramble, and then they both get up. All right, you probably don't know what I'm exactly talking about there, so we're going to move on to the next video, so I can explain that. Okay, so now we're looking at the end of their Nate Diaz McGregor one fight. When McGregor's getting beat up, and he has to shoot for a shot right there. Oh, and you see that nice Marcelo high elbow guillotine. And then this is the end of the fight. <laughs> the one of the most uh, shocking upsets in MMA history. Or maybe it wasn't an upset. A lot of people thought Diaz would win, but it was the most shocking pieces of theater, I guess. Um, okay, so McGregor takes a shot. A wrestling shot right there. He sprawl. He is able to sprawl because McGregor has no juice left in him. Diaz wraps his neck here. Okay, so right here, I want to point out something. So McGregor shows a lot of savvy, okay? So he knows the side that his neck gets wrapped on, even though he's half knocked out and super tired, he knows he has to pass his legs to the other side that his neck is wrapped, okay? So you see right here, his neck is getting wrapped on his right side, so he's taking his, with his left leg, he's already stepping around Diaz's left leg. Once again, he's preventing hip connection, this time by misalignment, okay? So he steps over right there. He stepped over, now he's able to go to Diaz's, um, Diaz's right side, the other side of the guillotine. The problem is Diaz is a next level jujitsu player and he understands this game and he, he faces next level jujitsu guys all the time. So he goes with, a, with kind of a Marcelo Garcia approach where he shoots his neck wrap arm super duper deep and he also turns his body away from McGregor Okay, which makes it so that McGregor, it keeps pressure on McGregor's neck and he's going to have to roll over. So you see right here, McGregor thinks he's all good because normally when you pass to this side, you're all good. But he's just going to roll back over because there's so much, the guillotine was so deep. Man, look at Diaz's face right there. Whew, like hamburger meat. All right, so you see right here, he thinks he's all good, but now Diaz goes 
it's sort of like Marcelo's Palma uh, high elbow guillotine, like this, uh, except he goes with a palm, a palm up guillotine where he's pushing the guillotine up rather than pulling it. Either way, what matters is that his neck wrap arm was really deep. The wrist was almost popping all the way through the trap here. So he's able to push through, and it doesn't matter that McGregor shifted to the other side. Diaz is already facing the other way and putting pressure on his neck, and he's going to have to roll. Okay, so we see right here, once again, Diaz's job is to now obtain a hip-to-hip -hip connection, okay, because he's gonna, about to get on top. Now, McGregor knows this, so McGregor's going to do his same patented gator roll right here, or the exorcist roll, as I like to call it. Okay, so we're going to see him do the roll, but now he gets smushed. He's not able to get up to his knees, and then it leads to the end of the fight. Okay, so I'm being a bit of a nitpicker here. And I've never been knocked out or this tired, probably. Um, but, you know, it's still worth learning. So, right here, McGregor goes into his roll. Okay, let's pause right here. This is where McGregor might have been able to um, survive, maybe, the fight. Maybe even come back in the fight. Okay? He prioritizes the roll without thinking about pinning Nate Diaz's hip. So his left arm here, if he had placed his left arm on Diaz's hip right here and really put a post in reaching, and then he initiated a bridge on his roll, he could have kept Diaz on his back long enough to get up, to turn his hips over and get to top position. But instead he prioritizes his own ability to get up by hooking he tried to hook right there. We're going to go back a little bit. We're going to go back. We're going to make our way here. So rather than pinning this arm, could have, McGarry's left arm, could have been posted right here on the hip at, at some point soon, which would keep Diaz's hips facing the sky. And then, see Diaz is already getting up here, which it would be hard. But a post right here could push Diaz back on his back. Instead, McGregor's going to try to use this arm to climb up Nate Diaz and get himself up. And he's going to fail at it. Like so. Now he's pinned on his hips and he's getting beat up. Um, and then we see the finish here. Okay, so... My big priority on guillotines is keep not necessarily getting myself up so quickly, but getting the person, getting the person who's going for the guillotines, keeping them on their hips, where they where it's hard for them to follow my hips. So McGregor prioritizes his own role, but he doesn't focus on controlling Nate Diaz's body. Okay, so this is nitpicky. Um, I didn't even use this defense until I watched McGregor do this about you know four years ago. Uh, actually, in uh, his Chad Mendes fight. So that was like five years ago, six years ago. Um, so nonetheless, his jiu-jitsu is, I think, very high level, and I've learned a lot. And I think it's worth remembering that, uh, you know, because he's, he's playing a different game now. He's more of a businessman. He's more of a provocateur. And uh, his MMA days, we've probably seen the best of him. Um, but you still want to appreciate uh, what, a, what a guy like that has accomplished. Um, so learned a lot from his X guard, learned a lot from his, um, his takedown ability, um, using the high lever principle, direction change principle. And then with his guillotines really focusing on hip disconnection. In fact, let's focus on, let's finish on a positive note and look at, and look at his Chad Mendez escape again. If this loads the way I hope it does, I'm gonna go back a second. Look at that! He's gonna go exorcist mode here. Boom! Can't find those hips. He gets on top. That time he had energy, so he got up to his knees. You can watch the rest of this. Might as well watch him get the knockout. Prevents the takedown. You know, I'm going to stop it here. 
I don't want this video to get flagged. It's educational, but I don't know. The UFC is sometimes pretty stringent with this stuff. So, um, all right, guys. So let's appreciate Conor McGregor, even though he punches, he punched an old man recently. Um, and I'll be back with you guys uh, very soon with some a, a new Shark Tank breakdown. Also, look below in the description for your uh, blue belt roadmap and checklist. Figure out the holes in your game. Figure out how far away you are from getting your blue belt. Or if you are a blue or purple belt, figure out, um, like I said, the holes in your game. Maybe there's more you could know. Uh, and there are a lot more resources related to that. Just look down below and, uh, and keep leveling up your jiu-jitsu. Become a maximal technician. All right? Have a good one, guys.